In today's abandoned video, we showcase the first part of our exploration to the colossal abandoned British Airways Flight Training Centre near Heathrow Airport, London. The unique and fascinating complex offers most points of interest we would seek whilst looking for derelict locations to visit. Items remaining extensive natural decay and scenes a member of the public is only likely to see through urban exploring. Join us as we take you through the huge facility and discover what was left behind. Remember to click subscribe and press the notification bell to never miss a video. In our last episode, we asked the question how can we take our videos to the next level? We had various intriguing replies, but have selected this one from Matthew, who suggested that we interview people with connections to the building in question to see an intimate perspective on the property. This is a great idea and one we have attempted to do in the past. This week we are asking, what do you think about copper wiring being stolen from neglected buildings? Can you understand why someone would take from a building soon to be demolished or do you not agree with it? Let us know to possibly feature in our next upload. You join us on an icy winter morning as we traipse through flooded fields to reach the perimeter fence of the flight training centre. Despite earning wet feet that wouldn't dry throughout the whole explore, our hopes were high that our early morning attempt would succeed. I won't remember this, I won't remember cold feet, I remember... Well, the, fence, the fence was old, it's like tipped over, but on the right corner here is a big camera folder, non infrared. We were aware of a security team on site because we had sighted them on the drive to the property. With the bonus of the building being very close to Heathrow Airport, the busiest of its kind in Europe, we knew that getting caught here would lead to unwanted complications. Slipping through the fence, we swiftly moved to cover in case of a car patrol around the road ringing the site. At the rear of the premises, we had found our way to the industrial section of the training centre, with buildings such as a boiler house that were more modern than others towards the front. It was likely that the main office blocks dated back to the 1950s and 60s, being the original structures that started the property's growth over the decades. Everything else, particularly these at the back, would have been added on when they were necessary, with unlimited funds provided for improvements of the complex. Wide open, we bursted into the boiler structure and began progressing onwards to the towering central office block which we were targeting to get a scenic visual of the facility and surrounding London. It was the ideal start to the day to observe the stunning views of the city. Although we couldn't truly show the scale of the training centre due to drone problems, it's important to register that this was probably the largest standalone building we have ever encountered. With Heathrow in the distance and planes flying over our heads every couple minutes, the experience was spectacular. 
Many pilots and crew that now carry people all over the world every day might have been sat learning their craft in the very neglected building we had to ourselves. After gazing over its land, we became glad that we had as much time as warranted to take our time documenting the structure. We decided to begin with the highest point of the offices, working our way down to cover the entire region, only then to move on to another block. Unbelievably trashed in here. Makes you think that, although we are expecting decent security measures, as you probably watched with the GoPro footage, um, kids have been coming in here for a long time and copper thieves. The thieving um, from the ceiling is very high. There's hardly anything left. There's an upturned computer screen and a video player, Sony one. This is a better example of how much thieving has gone on. See the pipes on the ceiling and all the roof tiles have come off, leaving those black bags on the ground. There's hardly anything in here apart from furniture so far. There's a little projector there. It's just cool, I've never seen a building like this, um, of this kind, especially this big. It's interesting to see with all the um, posters still up on the wall. This section consisted of many crew classrooms where the learning would base itself from. From here we would also find many interactive areas with specific scenes for the students to work on. You have to understand that this building is so big that I'm going to miss certain rooms because they're just not interesting. I'll try and just film bits that are interesting but they're not really common. It's quite cool with the chairs set up. Such a waste of furniture in here. Closing in 2015, the flight training centre had been in decline for a number of years. The main reason for mothballing the notorious site was the discovery of asbestos across the structure that was of such a dangerous amount that redeveloping proved too costly. Following this, a modernised premises was built within Heathrow Airport, where students and staff moved to. Ah, oh, now this is cool. Not sure these are in the right positions. I think they'd be next to the um, fake plane there. Oh, there's a picture of Mona Lisa. But yeah, these would be for like practicing um, safety measures and other stuff like that. As mentioned, these model plane interiors showcase different scenarios for the student crew to practice, covering everything they would need to be comfortable doing before a flight. Besides every demonstration room lied a classroom where the theory-based teaching would commence. Even though asbestos isn't effective until disturbed, it felt like the realisation that the material was inside the complex caused panic and all staff left overnight. Many rooms were set up as if the normal day would start in a few hours at 9am, even with writing still on the whiteboards. This is another classroom. It seems to get more interesting the lower we go down, which is a good sign. Oh shit, this is another plane, bigger one with no seats. What's this for? I know this bit back here is where the flight attendants would practice 
That's uh, the males and snacks. Ah, yeah. Hot males and stuff. The discovery of a model plane quickly lost its excitement as we noticed that every other room included one. Students here definitely were not short on space during their course. What in the world is it? Actually, it's a mock-up of a A380. Ah. So this could have been... Again, it looks like more like, you know, the flight attendant areas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cooking areas. This is like really fake. Yeah. Almost just like for demonstrations. Yeah, they've even got pictures of the A380 oven up there. And then the actual uh, practice model below. A bit of a different corridor, there's big gaps between each door. Another fake plane. Now oh, that one's been stripped, you can see how it was made though out of wood. Still the copper's been took down from the ceiling and the, the wires. Almost finished in the main office blocks, we briefly wandered through the ground floor but struggled to find much of interest until we saw a sign for a library. This is the library. That's cool. There's hardly any books remaining, but... I doubt this is the only library across the whole site, you'd be surprised. Promising. Yeah. Yeah, this is the last station. Medical training is a sign. Oh wow. This is very modern but really cool. Yeah, this is pretty something. I think there's more too. There's the presentation desk. Wrong in my assumption, this was the lone lecture theatre for the training centre. Our torchlights scanned the walls to see posters of joyful British Airways staff in the midst of their time learning. We'd assume that lectures from successful pilots and staff, safety demonstrations and informative presentations would go ahead in the space, with the 100 plus interested students that could fill the capacity of the room taking notes at the benches. This looks like a canteen. You think with all these people coming to the lecture fair, there'd have to be some way for them to eat. Ah. That answers that. A very big kitchen in a grotty state.
In a similar state we see in many vacant properties, the kitchen was left untouched with all of its equipment and cutlery remaining. It seems that this tends to be because the large metallic machines are too heavy and outdated to be removed. I think I was wrong about what the canteen was. There's a huge room here. Yeah. Oh, this is so cool. It's like one of those cafes at a supermarket. Imagine all the workers after spending the day here coming to get their food. Nothing's getting served here anymore, that's for sure. Although there would probably be small shops and vending machines dotted about the complex, like the lecture theatre, the canteen was the sole area for food catering. All the workers would venture here to break up their day, hence there being a huge empty hall, once full of seating. It's in a different building now, finally away from uh, offices, although it looks like offices will continue for now. Airbus training. Yep, these are definitely offices. What is that? Strange desk. Oh, there's loads of these actually. The thing above the, uh, the two seats has to be important. Maybe it's just a light. Not sure though. I'll have to find out what they are. This desk would have had the controls from a cockpit on its platform that you can just make out today so that a teacher could label and help a training pilot learn each of their jobs. What in the fuck? Oh my god. It's like a simulator, but it's attached to the crane. Or maybe it's not, I'm not really sure. There's more seats down there. <laughs> so weird, it looks like something big was removed from there, so maybe this was some sort of simulator. Little did we know that in no time we would come across a real simulator that formerly filled up this room too. Jesus, it's just never ending corridors. There's another huge chamber here for the um, simulator. Oh my god, there's no floor. What in the world is that? Oh my god. This place is actually amazing. Where else would you find anything like this? Oh, the whole cockpit's in here as well. Sucks that the metal fees have had their run of it. Wow. Yeah, so this is like one of those motion uh, machines, I can't really remember what they're called. It would move around as if the pilots were flying when they were practicing. So, so cool. The motion simulator's cockpit was designed to match that of the plane it was adhered to. Every inch of it was coated in realism, except for the windows that were each computer monitors that would show an animated point of view of the flight situation the pilot chose to practice. It makes you think that this machine must have been outdated, because why else would they lose it and just leave it here, rather than transporting it to the new uh, training centre, which is literally miles away. Not far at all. The training campus contained 15 state-of-the-art flight simulators, ranging from Boeing 747s to jumbo jets. Professional pilots would use them and would be able to have zero flight time, going straight from a simulator to a full aircraft. 
Here is real footage from one of the machines at the training center when it was open. As you can see, the 4D experience was very realistic. The simulator is able to be adjusted to mimic different weather conditions, visibility, engine failure, and taking off or landing at various airports around the world. Sadly, the highly expensive gadget doesn't even appear like it used to. Scrappers have stolen its useful components, leaving it a shell of the impressive machinery it once was. The reason many of the simulators were left was because they were outdated to new motion technology and didn't meet requirements. Looking at it from the bottom, it's very interesting. You can see how it would move up and down and then the space around it shows that it would move left and right as well to imitate the flying man by the pilot. This is a huge computer room that would control all the simulators in these four massive spaces. It's kind of hard to get around here because there's no floor. Look at this. It's as if they were building a plane. Whether a real one or a fake one for a um, practicing. I'm not sure. After looking in detail at some of the simulator chambers, we had only covered a fraction of the gigantic site. There was so much more to see, and bits that are much more interesting than what we have shown so far. Next week we will continue our documentary of the once in a lifetime location, finding the most decayed areas of the training center, much more motion equipment and the largest mock planes yet. Be sure to join us in 7 days time to see what else the facility has to offer. We hope you enjoyed part 1 of the biggest building we have ever documented. If you enjoyed our coverage feel free to like the video to show your support and subscribe to never miss a future video. Here are some of our photographs captured at the British Airways Training College. If you like the look of them check out our Instagram page in the description where we share images of our explorers months before they are seen on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for part two next week. We don't think you'll want to miss it. See you next time.